Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to another long-awaited gathering of Defend It, where Gerard defends the internet's most hated games. Internet Court is now in session. Cue the theme music. Defend It! Absolutely flattered to be here, Your Honor. Apparently, Mr. Beauty Completerson over here just doesn't know when he's licked. Uh, objection, Your Honor. I have not yet been licked. Oh, I've licked you all right. I've licked you up and down like a pudding pop. I plead the fifth. I am not a pudding pop. Wrong way to plead the fifth. Order! Order in my court! Excellent. If y'all step out of line in my court, you best be stepping somewhere else. Okay. <laughs> now... We're here today to address the internet's long-standing gripe that Sonic Unleashed amounts to little more than pixelated farts on ice. I'll be honest, I kinda understand where he's coming from. But, in the name of checks and balances, Gerard, the completionist, is here to defend the honor of developer Yoshihisa Hashimoto and the Sonic team for bringing forth an ambitious, inventive addition to the Sonic franchise. Yes, Your Honor, this is just all sorely misunderstood. The game should get nothing but credit for a triumphant attempt in revitalizing the Sonic franchise. Oh, I'll give you a Sonic franchise. Objection, that made no sense. Oh. <laughs> roasted! Roasted! <laughs> I got roasted. Oh, in this courtroom! What do you think this is? Some kind of fan Friday? No, 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 no. There's no fan Friday in my courtroom. I'm the judge. I'm the judge. Respect my authority. <sighs> We, we respect your authority. Oh yes, that's what I like to hear. All right, Mr. Internet, Mr. Prosecution, let's hear your opening arguments, shall we? Very well, Your Honor, and thank you again for your precious time. Get ready to watch a grown man cry. I'm talking about you, fuzzy face. I know who you're talking about. God. The internet's first point stems from the very idea of Sonic Unleashed itself. Oh, could you not refer to yourself in the third person? <sighs> very well. All actions that the int er, I believe, are far too ambitious for a franchise that obviously needs a back-to-basics approach. I mean, come on. Sonic 06 and now this? If you're still a fan of the Sonic franchise after all these tragic installments, Sonic Team owes it to you, the fans, to just make a Sonic game with a simple old-school story with the simple old-school characters. We have Metal, Shadow, Silver, now a giant pig werewolf hog? What is going on in there? Just give me Sonic! Sonic goes fast, has a sidekick named Tails, and a dude named Knuckles who helps him out reluctantly, all while trying to stop the evil Dr. Robotnik from world domination. That's all we need. World domination is a big enough conflict to focus on. In fact, make Amy Rose just as powerful as Sonic, not just some tag-along lady hog that just swoons over Sonic every time she's on screen, and you have a platformer that provides hours of entertainment for everyone. <laughs> I told you he'd cry. Objection! These are not tears, I am simply cleaning my eyes. With tears. Sustained internet! If you're not gonna play nice, I'm gonna take this gavel and I'm gonna bang it right down on this thing. Very well, your honor. I'll go easy on the baby. Think of this next point as the glass of warm milk that's gonna put the little baby to sleep. Why is the internet so dumb? Proving my next point is as easy as day turning to night. The awful, slow, nighttime levels. There's just no excuse for them. There's one solid reason we play any of the Sonic the Hedgehog games. It's not relating to the characters, it's not a complex plot line, it's going fast. Period. Since the very first game, all we've ever wanted was at the very least to see Sonic burning past his surroundings at unimaginable speeds faster than his enemies can comprehend to once again stop his arch nemesis, Dr. Robotnik, from taking over the world. And don't get me wrong, Sonic Unleashed has some great daytime levels. Blazing through various environments all around the world and a revamped musical score make the game an amazing upgrade from its predecessors. But then the night falls and your world is brought to a screeching halt by the clumsy 
clunky yet stretchy weird mechanics of the Werehog. And as fun as the daytime levels are, their high speed makes them last all of five minutes. But the nighttime levels are literally three times longer. As ambitious of an idea as it was, I think the developers at Sonic Team are doing too much to please new fans and are losing sight of why people play Sonic games in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> As if your nighttime levels even last more than five minutes. Your Honor, if we're going to devolve to petty insults, then why don't you just go beat No Man's Sky, okay, huh? Go ahead and just complete No Man's okay, Sky. Yeah, How about you do that, huh? Because that's huh? what this game is. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, yeah you that's can do a that. Doable Mr. Thing. Big okay. Beard, complete everything. <laughs> I want to do that. Yeah, let's go complete the No Man's okay. Sky. Order! Order in this totally real, not at all made up, fake courtroom that has more plastic than human pieces. It's like Hollywood up in here. Internet. You best get on with your point before I get you up in the sky. Man. Nailed it. Of course, Your Honor, but I can't be held responsible for any further outbursts by Mr. Brown and Curly over there. The third mistake Sonic Unleashed made was stretching its console demographic too far. So far that it weakens the overall possibilities for the game. Sonic Team developed the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions, while developers at DIMS headed the Wii and PS2 versions, which was a complete waste of resources. Why hire game devs known for creating Sonic handhelds to create a compatible version for a dying breed of a console? 2008 didn't need to see anything new for the PS2. It came out eight years before. Why not double down on Nintendo and make a version for the DS? Yes, at least then you could fold the screen out of your sight when you had to take a break from a hedgehog who can't decide if he's Wolfman or Mr. Fantastic on a bad hair day. Instead, they forced themselves to make a storyline broad enough and gameplay mechanics elementary enough to allow the forgotten stepchild PS2 to play along with the new gen systems. You're not one of the cool kids anymore, PS2. Get back in your cage! Oh, 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 caught in the end zone for the touchdown! <laughs> That is, uh, that's a football for all you, uh, betas out there. Internet, I swear to God, I'm gonna cross-examine the living hell out of you! Not so fast, my bumbling bearded boss fight! About to blow your mind to pieces. Your Honor, I'd like to call my witness to the stand. And who might this witness be? I call my witness to the stand. Get in here! Oh yeah, Dodger coming at you from every side. What? Oh, come on. Remember the time we did Aladdin together? And the other time that we did Aladdin together? All right, now I see why she's here. Sorry, dude, he helps me out with my channel. I do what I can. I scratch backs. I'm a back scratcher. Order in the courtroom! The next back scratch that happens in this courtroom better be on mine. With kitties. Because I love when kitties run up and down your back. It's cute. Very well, Your Honor. I will question my witness. <laughs> hey! You! Me, compadre! How you doing? How's life? How's mom? Huh? Oh, it's funny you ask. Sweet lady, now you know the reason you're here in internet court, right? Oh, yes. We've got to put this Sonic Unleashed business to rest. So please, tell the court why this game cannot be defended. Well, actually, after our last pre-trial meeting, I've had a change of heart. Whoa! That's right! Mm. Classic misdirection. Thank you, Your Honor. The notion that Sonic Team stretched itself too thin across its console sales couldn't be more irrelevant. Take the facts. PS2 was first released in 2000. Sonic Unleashed came out in 2008. With an eight year difference, one would think that releasing a game on the PS2 would be futile, especially since the PS3 came out in 2006, only two years before Sonic Unleashed's release. 
But if you look at the total console sales in 2008, PS3 sold 3,544,900. PS2 sold only 1 million less at 2,502,300. In fact, in the month of February, it actually outsold the PS3. So if you're the Sonic team and you're planning a release date in mid-November for the holidays, you would be stupid not to develop a PS2 release. And instead of scrambling to develop the game for another console themselves, they gave a smaller game dev team in Dimps the chance to break into the big console gaming world. So not only did Sonic Team capitalize on the surprising spike in sales of an eight-year-old console, but they gave an indie development team known for handheld games a big console opportunity, and they knocked it out of the park. In fact, the reviews for the PS2 version are the best reviews of the game out of all of its console releases. I don't know. Maybe Sonic Team should have focused on new-gen systems and not capitalized on the obvious opportunity for financial success. But then again, what do I know? Thank you, Gerald. All right, Mr. Beardman, these two blabbermouths are done. They're gonna need some aloe vera for that burn. <laughs> like a whole plant. Anyway, the ball's in your court now, sir. My, well, actually, it's my court. Uh, my balls are in your court. Or beard, as it were. You got it, Your Honor. It's time to bring this up to Sonic Speed. In response to the internet's accusations of Sonic Team stretching its console demographic too thin, I'm with our witness on this one. The Sonic franchise is so popular in the gaming community, it behooves itself to cater to every console medium available. To say that Sonic Team should not have commissioned the developers at Dimps to create a PS2 version would be rejecting all of the millions of Sonic fans that may not be able to afford the hundreds of dollars for a new gen console. I'll even go as far as to say that I agree with the internet by saying they should have developed a playable version for the Nintendo DS, but only to support and foreshadow their inevitable business plan to create games for the Wii U and 3DS to integrate, like the new Smash Bros or the now older Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. They feature a ton of cross-platform possibilities. Besides some differences in gameplay difficulty and graphic quality, Sonic Team managed to create a game that could be enjoyed for the same reasons on all the platforms. Oh, 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 does it hurt? What? Oh, the thunder. Oh, does that thunder hurt your ears? Because here comes the lightning, one, two. Thunder literally always comes after lightning. I, I don't... Kazam. Sonic Team has admittedly been hit or miss with its nonetheless ambitious additions to the franchise, sometimes expanding the universe with too many characters, wondering who the player should be left to care about through the course of the story, and sometimes with a hasty release to satisfy the large number of Sonic fans there are in the world. These excuses sometimes can actually be considered factual evidence as to why something went wrong with the game. But I still can't put Sonic Unleashed in the same category as such titles like Sonic Boom or, well, you know, Sonic 06, because it's absolutely none of those things. The game is finished, it's done, it's polished, it's clean. Sonic Team's ambition for this title was obviously well developed. Even the Werehog levels, which yes, are clearly much slower than the daytime levels, are filled with elements that will still make the game enjoyable. Playing as the Werehog, you utilize fighting combos to defeat your enemies, you can use your stretchable arms to cling to nearby items, solve puzzle elements to advance through the stages, and even a special move, Unleashed Mode, which temporarily increases the power of the Werehog's attacks. And let's be honest, if the Werehog character mechanics were given to anyone else besides Sonic, no one would have said a word. A beefed up Knuckles wouldn't be criticized one bit. The only reason the Werehog mechanics were criticized is because nobody altered the stock song physicality before Hashimoto's Werehog. If we could just take a step back, look at the game objectively, and go with the flow of the story instead of worrying about how fast we were moving, I think it's clear to any fan of the franchise that this is actually a well-crafted addition to the Sonic mythos. Object. Ah, I can't do it! I can't take it! He's too optimistic! He's too nice! He's got a box of puppies hidden in his beard! I know it! Order! Beardo, you got puppies in that manger of yours. You best be sharing or you're in contempt of court. Give us the puppies! I don't have any puppies. I don't have any of them. None. All right, move on to your next point, but I swear to God, if you got puppies up in there, look at Dodger. Hmm? I ain't taking care of that. That's a sad puppy yourself. We already got one in this courtroom. 
Thank you. Sonic Team developer Yoshihisa Hashimoto has worked on various Sonic installments, but Sonic Unleashed was the first title he helmed for the Sonic franchise. And there's a deeper reason for his creation of the Werehog than simply mixing things up. In the story of the game, Eggman fires his latest ray weapon at Sonic and subsequently the world, draining the energy from the Chaos Emeralds and splitting the Earth into seven pieces. This releases Dark Guy from the center of the Earth and creates an unforeseen side effect in Sonic. Therefore, from the hero's perspective, Sonic is just as surprised at his new abilities as the player is. He's learning how to live with these new abilities night after night, just like the player does. It's a little bit of a brilliant stroke of a plot twist and character development, and it's all established within the game's cold open cutscene. And to top it all off, they completely reimagined the music underscoring the franchise. Sonic is usually filled with running hair metal solos. They took advantage of the capabilities of the PS3 and the Xbox 360, and they totally succeeded. The cutscenes look great, the music is as epic as the open world the game throws you into, and the gameplay, while yes at times can be slower than we're used to, is clean and a refreshing adventure in comparison to a game in the likes of Sonic 06 and Sonic Boom. Your Honor, the bearded buffoon just can't admit that Sonic Team, try as they might, created another dud for the dump. The, the prosecution has made it abundantly clear that any Sonic game made henceforth should stick to what it does best, a hedgehog that goes fast, period. Ha! <laughs> the only thing Sonic Team did wrong was do its best to please a fan base that can't appreciate Sonic for what it is. And for the record, if I had puppies in my beard, I would give you no access to them. Oh, here we go again. Is that what you want? You want to go? Okay, you okay. want to go? I'll do it. I'll get it for you. Hey, I'll get breathe. it. I'm going to take it to you. Take it to the limit. Well, that was a close one. Who's gonna come out on top? Is Sonic Unleashed a worthwhile addition to the franchise or not? As you all know, in internet court, the verdict is up to you. Let us know what your verdict is in the comments below, and while you're at it, visit Dodger's page on the YouTubes. I like to help out the unfortunate. And subscribe to this channel, and if you want to, visit my channel. It's uh, pretty awesome. And, be sure to come back every month. We have a special Tuesday where Defend It returns, and we will be doing this forever. Gerard has told me there will be no more gaps in Defend It. It will continue forever. He heard your cries. He knows you want it, so he's not gonna ever be late on one of these again. He told me to say that to you. So with that said, thank you for watching, and remember, Only you can prevent forest fires. <laughs> <laughs>